Hey guys, Pastor Jurgen here. I'm so glad you're tuning into one of our powerful messages that is guaranteed to absolutely elevate your life to another level. At Awaken, we only want to preach fresh, real, powerful to help you grow stronger in your walk with God, develop your faith so you can take more territory. I'm praying that God blesses you and enriches your soul as you listen to this amazing word from God. God bless you. We could just soak in his presence. Just take this moment. Thank you, Lord. We thank you that your spirit is here. God, prepare our hearts to receive this word today. I come against any noise in our spirit. I bind every demonic force, every dark thing that's taking space in our mind, that's affecting our soul, that's crushing our spirit. We command you to leave in Jesus' name. I thank you for the authority that you've given this house, the authority you've given us as believers to rule and reign in this life. God, I thank you, Lord, that you're unlocking authority right now in this moment. God, I thank you those that are feeling distraught or despondent are being healed. God, I thank you, Lord, let spirit, your spirit, come alive on the inside of us. God, I thank you, Lord. That those that need a word showed up on the right day today. Those that have been tormented in their spirit, let them feel peace in their heart. God, I thank you right now. Let joy start to bubble up again in those that have lost joy. God, I pray for everyone that made it over the line and got here. Let them get what they need today. But God, I pray for the ones that couldn't get over the line. So we pray for them where they're at. Touch them in their house, in their bed, in their room, wherever they're at right now that they're stuck, God. We, we loose them for your kingdom, that they find a way to pick up the phone and ask for help, that, God, you touch them where they're at, that, Lord, they feel something on the inside, spark, to come back to life, to find truth again. Hit them with the pulse of your spirit. Thank you for those that are lost, God, that they're going to run into one of us today, that we're going to be on fire for you, that we're going to be embers for your kingdom. They're going to light them up again. Let us be that light on a hill. We don't want to be another dim church in California. Let us shine today. Let there be a ripple effect out from San Marcos today, God, that, Lord, something's going on in San Marcos. Something's going on with the spirit of the living God. Thank you for this moment, God. We pause to let you move. In Jesus' name, everybody said, amen. amen. Come on. Okay. <laughs> what level can we handle today? I don't think the nine o'clock was ready. I felt like I showed up too hot at the nine. I felt bad a little bit. I just came out hard charging, so I'm trying to, we're trying to move it in a little bit, but yeah, we're gonna do it. We're gonna look at, you all look spicy. So we're gonna do it. We're gonna go full spice, habanero spice. All right. Thank you, worship team. Calm down. No more drums. I feel like the <laughs> drums are like a war beat. We're fine. We're going to do fine. All right. Lord, help me. You're all, you can see it. Yeah. There is an anointing in here, though. And God wants to show up and do a big thing. So a couple weeks ago, this has been stirring in my spirit for about three weeks. And uh, it was so funny. I was going to preach it last week, hardcore, but. Pastor Jurgen convicted me. He's like, chill out. You're at a wedding. Enjoy the moment. You don't need to leave early. It'd be disrespectful. I know, but I got to play the video. And it was epic. It's like what we needed. Pastor Jurgen had a word. It was like right what we needed. And, uh, and then it's funny. God has perfect timing. I got to chew on this some more, work it out, get away from my normal environment, and God just started downloading more, and so we're going to work it out. But a couple weeks ago, I just woke up with this thought, Imago Day. 
And so I wrote it down. The next day, I'm just on a little prayer walk, and God started talking to me about Imago Day. And I knew it meant, you know, translated image of God. And so then I went and did a little deep dive on it, and I really felt like, all right, let me, let me look this up, biblical references, all sorts of stuff. Image of God is defined as the metaphysical expression associated uniquely to humans, which signifies the symbolic connection between God and humanity. This phrase, you know, comes out of Genesis 1.27 in the word of God. God created man in his own image. The biblical passage doesn't imply that God is human form, but it, that humans are in the image of God in their moral, spiritual, and intellectual essence. Basically, what you have to understand, we reflect God's divine nature in our ability to achieve unique characteristics which we've been given. These qualities make us different than all other creatures. We can rationalize understanding, creative liberty, capacity for self understanding for potential for living this God life here on earth. The Holy Spirit works in us and through us that we can have revelation, divine encounter, a connection with the Almighty. No other creature can have that connection. No angel. We have a unique, we're made in his image. We connect spirit to spirit. And so as I was having this revelation, my question in prayer, God, if we were born to rule and reign and made in your image, why do I meet so many Christians that suck? <laughs> I'm just being real here today. Me being one of them back in the day, I was like, man, I am a crappy Christian. Like, I believe in God, but why does my life look like this? Why am I always going to the altar? Why am I always asking? Why am I just on this struggle bus? But I've still been asking. I was like, oh, Lord, how did I get to this place where I feel like I'm winning in life? I have epic friends. I'm doing epic things. I got these kids that are amazing. Like, but how do I reproduce this thing? And he goes, you did the work. Not everybody's willing to do the work. I'm like, what work did I do? Like, I didn't understand, so God started showing me where I was putting in the work, and I was allowing myself to be discipled to the point many things were painful. I was working out. I just didn't know it. So God was revealing to me the blueprint. And it's not like I'm all that in a bag of chips. I'm still working it way out. I still experience these same things, but I am quick because now that I know. You don't know what you don't know. Let me read this first. In the New Testament, Jesus, the Savior of the world, said that we will do even greater things than him. How many know Jesus did some pretty epic things? This is what I'm talking about. I'm like, God, why am I not doing those epic things at that level? I want to go next level. And God's like, well, then you better apply next level things. You better get around people that are doing the things I'm doing because they're out there. Quit reading about them. Go hang out with them. So God says, for you to go to the next level, for you to keep pouring into people to get your people to the next level, you got to deal with some of the stuff that you're not dealing with. You got to deal with some wounds. Because if you don't deal with them, then your kids will have to. And the reason why you've been on the journey that you've been doing is because your family never asked me this question. You're the first one in your family line to ever ask this question. If I was born to be a champion, what happened? When the championship emerged, it's all about champion. I'm like, Lord, I want to be a champion in everything I do. So what happened? And he's like, that's a great question. No one in your family, your mom didn't ask that, your dad didn't ask that, and they're amazing parents. You're the first one to ask that. So now I can show you and reveal what you need to work on to get you to the level you're a champion so your kids now are born into that champion line. It's for every single one of us, not just me. So the Holy Spirit literally three weeks ago said, I need you to deal on a new level with your wounds. And if you can deal with your wounds and put in the work, I can take you to places you've never been. You'll be able to do even greater things then my son, are you ready? So the question of this church is, if we're gonna do radical things for the kingdom, if we're gonna be champions, if we're gonna make, 
be the imago Dei, made in the image, but not just made the image, walking out the image of God to do even greater things than his son, Jesus. What does that look like? Well, it looks like this. We're going to expose some lies. We're going to expose some truths, and we're going to start working it out today if you want to be able to do that, to go to that next level. Many people say they do. If I said, who wants to be a millionaire? Usually that's when you raise your hand. Okay. But if that's too small for you, who wants to be a billionaire? Okay. Oh, hey, hey, hey now. And if you don't, then come to the altar. We'll deal with that afterwards because you should have a desire. But most people, everyone typically would say, yeah, I'd love to be a millionaire. I'd love to be financially free. But then when I go, oh, it's this, this is the word. Oh, oh I, didn't, I didn't know there were strings attached. I'm going to make that comment. So the question that has been ringing in my head for three weeks now is, you were born to be a champion, then why aren't you? So I want to break it down today. See, we are spiritual beings, not just a body. We do not exist. Oh, hello. We did not exist only in a physical world. We are spiritual beings. Also, God made a spirit, soul, and body. We have to have the revelation on this blueprint so we understand. 1 Thessalonians uh, 5.23, and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless. We are a spirit, a soul, and body. Our body connects with the physical world through touch, taste, sight, smell, hearing. We experience this physical world we live in, but we are spirits. Our soul is the part of us that includes our heart, our mind, the place of imagination, trust, desire, rhythm, song, art, emotion, dreams. We relate to others and ourselves with our soul. We feel the emotions of others with our soul. Being creative in our soul, we are moved by other souls, making us respond in certain ways. The more we detach from how we feel in our soul, the more calloused we become, the further away from God we become. We can't get calloused in our spirit because it it breaks us apart from that spirit connection. Our spirit, the well, spring of life, the seat of motivation. Our life comes from the invisible, mysterious God consciousness called that spirit within. Daniel said his spirit was in the midst of his body. Jesus said living water flows from the innermost being of believers when they're filled with the Holy Spirit. God dwells in our spirit when we receive Christ. He communicates with us through the spirit. He is a spirit. John 4, 24 says this, God is spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. Communion with God requires us to be spiritually alive. The Christian East term is born again. So our spirit has enormous significance. All of creation, we alone, this spiritual being, this is how we connect with God. If we let our spirit get sick, our connection with God will be sick. When we receive Christ, our spirit is regenerated, born again. We, com- we receive complete salvation when we receive Christ. We are born of God, by God who is spirit. We are born spiritually. This rebirth awakens our spirit to God. We become, if you will, God aware. You picking up what I'm putting down? Just trying to give us the foundation here so we can build on this. So our soul is being saved. Our inner man or woman, our heart, our mind, we need to renew it daily. Our emotions, desires, and trust are all being transformed as we walk with Christ. It's not like you're born again. You're like, boom, here we go. I'm a champion. No, our spirit is born again, and now we're working out our salvation. Our bodies are not yet saved, but at the resurrection... There will be redemption, and our bodies will be complete. And I can't wait. Bada bing, bada boom. (laughs) Till then, I'll work out and try to do the best I can. I just need God to show me what my resurrection body looks like so I can be pumped. I just want to be pumped. And I just want there to be chips and salsa with no side effects. Just, I need... You know that movie? What was it? Brad Pitt, he was fighting all the time. Fight Club. Just, I, that's what I'm like, Lord, if that's the image, I feel it. With chips and salsa. I st- Make it plain. Lord, direct my steps right to that vision. Okay, sorry. I don't mean to stir that up, babe. 
Listen, even though we've been born again and received a new spirit, we're not invincible from damage. And this is what we got to get as believers, that our spirit can be contaminated, needing cleansing, healing, restoration. How long you've been a Christian means nothing. People go, I've been a Christian 30 years. Honestly, I wouldn't say that if your life sucks. It just is a bad reflection on Jesus. You should say, I just got saved last week. I'll be like, dang, bro, you know a lot of the word, a week? I mean, that's what I do. That's what I do. But our most damaging things, like, because if you don't do the work, it, 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 you're, it doesn't matter. I've been saved this long, but if you do no work, it's, it's the same. I know people that go to the gym, they look the same. Don't judge me. Because they go around, they're mostly talking. But they did say they go to the gym. You know, one of the most damaging things that can happen to us is becoming spiritually sick. When our spirit is wounded and unhealed, the infection travels through our physical, mental, and emotional life, leaving us confused, wounded, and hurt, and behaving out of character. This is why we don't see Christians become champions, because we get stuck in a wound, and we don't deal with wound care. Because our whole life springs from our spirit, it's vital that we stay in good health. Only a troubled life springs from a troubled fountain and creates an unwell spirit. If I could show you this real quick, I just wanna show you kind of where we're at in the process because I've been here 18 years now and it's not like you come to awaken your life changes, but I'm just saying you awaken to a new thing. Meaning, I thought my marriage, like when we got married, I'm like, dude, this is amazing. And then we started hanging out with Pastor Jurgen Leanne and he was discipling me. She goes, why don't you say those nice things like Pastor Jurgen does? I'm like, what? He's Pastor Jurgen. He has to say those things. Oh, why don't you bring me flowers? Like, Pastor Jurgen, quit hanging out with them then. No, what happened was I was awakened to a new level in marriage that I never experienced before growing up. Like, I didn't see it modeled the way they modeled it. It's called a new level. Like, I thought I was doing pretty good in life, and then I hung out with somebody that was just ripping it in business, and I go, that's a new level. Like, listen, I bought, we bought a boat. I was pumped on it till I went on somebody else's boat. And then I'm like, my boat's a homeless shelter. <laughs> it's like, you don't know till you get around the new level and then you're awakened to the new level. Like, you know, cruising around on my side-by-sides is fun until you go do it on Baja on a beach and someone's cracking oysters, like 200 of them. And you're like, this is the new level. But I was awakened to the new level. You know, when, you, when, you, when I bought my first condo, I was pumped out of my mind. I was like, two-bedroom condo, it's mine. And I got married, and then all of a sudden, I saw the house across the street, and I'm like, oh, I want that house. But, you know, you asked me a year ago, I was pumped. I don't need another house. And then I got that house. This is our house for life. And then we moved to Scripps. I'm like, okay, this is a new level. This is my house for life. We're never moving. And now we're in Escondido on 12 acres, and it's a lot. Yo. Oh. I'm like, but there's new levels that you get awakened to and you start to strive because your vision changes. But if you don't hang out with people that inspire you, your vision won't change. Friends of a feather, flock together. I say get stuck together. We got to have friends that challenge us, that help us grow, that help us move, that biblically iron sharpens iron. But do you have that in your life? See, what happens is, I, I came, I was awakened to this idea, and then I survey assess it. Do I have the tools? If you're going to remodel a house, you first got to ask, do you have the tools? I promise you here. It's not like Pastor Jurgen woke up one day and said, we need to do more. Right. No, no, he just realized, hey, we're missing this tool for marriage. Hey, we're missing this thing. We need recovery. Hey, we're missing this tool. We need this. We need DNA. We need to level up this. We need to do this. We need business people. I don't want to attract millionaires. I want to build millionaires. Let's do PFA. <laughs> Let's get people in. Like, he just started equipping these tools to resource us so we could level up our life and remodel our life. But if you don't know, and then you get in the remodel, and then how many know, like, well, I didn't know that was in there. Now that I'm in this thing, or my wife brings a new tile home, and you're like, I didn't know they could go that level tile. (laughs) What do you mean there's heated floors? What do you mean I could have a toilet that's heated? (laughs) That's next level. And if you've never experienced that, I just want to encourage you today. There are toilets that do a lot of things. 
And it's just... Okay, anyways, moving on. What happens is, now what I'm talking about is right here in the remodel. So today I'm preaching on... If you got to take this thing, you don't feel like a champion, you feel like you're stuck at a level, we are going to do a remodel. I'm going to move you over here because and show you, you don't know what you do so you can level up your life. Are you ready for that? I feel like it's perfect timing because we're going into a merge champion. And some of you might still be on the fence or maybe you're not going. I encourage you. There's no faster remodel. Sure, you can come to church, you can do these things, you go to Connect, and sure, over the next year, 18 months, we get your permits or whatever, it's going to take a long time to remodel your soul, or you can come to three days, carve out some time for Jesus, and you're going to get remodeled in a weekend, and you don't know what happened, and then you're going to build this bond with dudes you've never met, you're going to come back, and you're going to have an army to help remodel whatever you're going through. Don't cheat yourself out on a fast-paced remodel, it can happen spiritually, supernaturally, overnight if you allow God to move and let him in, okay? Let me pray. God, do what you do. Help me get through it. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Title on my message is Wounded. It'll make or break you. See, when, you're, when you break an arm, if you take care of it the right way, a doctor's gonna put a cast on it, put it in alignment, and it's gonna heal correctly. But sometimes we break things. We're like, I don't want to go get help. And they see, you know, they're walking around with a clavicle sticking out. Because they just left, and it's weaker than it should be. But you know, if a bone heals correctly, guess what? It heals stronger. God can take these moments that we're walking through. God can use everything you've been wounded by and make it stronger, better, equip you with more knowledge, wisdom, discernment. If you can allow him to let him go to those places, touch you where you're at so you could be healed, he will heal you stronger. He will give you discernment that you've never had before. But if you're going to do it your way, you're going to guard yourself, protect yourself, that wound is going to stay there and it could hurt you or kill you or put a ceiling over your life that only God can help you get to. This is what we're preaching on today. Proverbs 4, 23, keep your heart with all diligence for out of it springs, guard your heart, keep your heart with all diligence for out of it springs the issues of life. Proverbs 18, 14, the human spirit can endure in sickness, but a crushed spirit who can bear. There are four types of spirits I wanna get to. I wanna get you all four spirits and I'll try to break them down as fast as I can. Holy cow, that's rude. <laughs> Number one, a bruised spirit. Number two, a lacerated spirit, a cut spirit. Number three, a broken spirit. And number four, a poisoned spirit. We're gonna get through these spirits so you can understand and see if there's any symptoms you may have so you can start to give them to God so you can get healed in it because the floor that you stand on and you look up a ceiling, that ceiling is called to be your next floor. If you can allow God to get in there and show you, reveal to you, and get the right tools to help you heal up a spirit that may have been wounded. Anybody with me? A bruised spirit. Here's the symptoms. A bruised spirit leaves us impatient, can be a little short. We start to withdraw. We don't play full out. We start to get timid with decisions. We get guarded in life, guarded in relationships. We second guess ourselves. We get guarded in business. And it really happens because someone with a critical spirit, people can be a hard worker, People could go all out. Even with kids, they could be playing hard in sports. Man, I, if being a chiropractor, I see people all the time with bruised ribs. They don't know the difference. They think they're broken. They're so painful. You can't even hug somebody. You're kind of like, oh, I got, uh, you don't want to be a wimp, but you're like, uh. And I get so ticked. If, I've, if you've ever bruised this, you know this. If someone's trying to make me laugh, it hurts so bad. Don't make me laugh. Stop it. Stop it. I've already upset somebody. But a, a bruised spirit, like, it's like a bruised rib. You just, you don't want to take full swings. You actually go, I, I can't golf, I got a bruise. So you take yourself out of games, out of situations. You don't, you get invited places. You don't want to sound like a wimp, so you just say no. But that bruise can keep you out of where you're supposed to be because you're not dealing with it correctly. I know many people that are passionate, many hard workers, creatives or sensitive, 
And they're like an artist, so they create something, whether it's a worship song or a song or a picture or whatever, and then some critical spirit goes, ah, I don't like it. They just had bad taste, but you took it personal, so it's a little bit of bruise. You could be a builder and built this epic home, and someone comes through and starts nitpicking all the things you didn't do right or didn't finish or stuff that thought good on the plans, but didn't. and then all of a sudden, they take that critical spirit, and it wounds them, and they change the way they look. You name your passion. I've been in chiropractic, you know? People come in, they got your opinion, you get bruises all the way. You look at preachers under many attacks standing up for Christ. I feel like God made me a chiropractor because I took the lickings way early. Like, you're not a real doctor. Oh, yeah, I got it out of Cracker Jacks, bro. Yeah, you just, you know, all you do is crack people. That's right. It's the best crack in town. I got a line for everything. You just pop stuff? No, I pop popcorn. I cure a ham. I adjust you, bro. I'm about to adjust your attitude. Your wife gave me 20 extra bucks just to adjust that attitude. Okay, so chill out, all right? Don't let the door hit you or the good Lord split you, all right? You know, so I'm like, I was made to be a pastor, but he programmed, he's like, get through chiropractic. You survive that, I'll put you in a pulpit. Because this is next level. The hate you get, the emails you get. I even get handwritten hate notes now. I mean, that's impressive. They had to go spend money on a stamp. I don't even know where you find stamps these days. So I get a stamp in the mail. I'm like, someone put a lot of work into this hate just to bruise me, but I refuse. I'm not going to let a spoken word come over just because we stand for truth. So I've seen good men fall out of the race. I've seen good pastors step down because they couldn't handle the heat, unable to take the onslaught anymore. Many say, if you do a study, I love Charles Spurgeon, but he died in his 50s, and they say they suggested it was from discouragement and depression that the constant critics in the press caused him, that his life ended short. He didn't have the right people around him speaking life into him. Who do you have around you that can help you navigate some of the bruises in your life? Jesus said that he came to heal those that were bruised or crushed in this life. In Isaiah 42, 3, it says, a bruised reed he will not break, and smoking flax he will not quench. He will bring forth justice and truth, unable to get up again and get going, for some of their fire has gone out. They're a smoldering wick, a bruised reed. Let me tell you. Pastor Jurgen's one of the greatest pastors. Here I was, I came to this church in my 30s, been in church my whole life. I didn't like pastors. I definitely didn't like Christians. And then I meet Pastor Jurgen that was speaking life. You know what he did? He discipled me through all my wounds. I've had every one that I described on here. I've had a bruised spirit. I've had a broken spirit. I've had a lacerated spirit. And I would say that on some level, I had a poison spirit. But Pastor Jurgen saw beyond that. He loved on me. He saw through the shortcomings. He thought through the things. Listen, we're not here to judge people. We're here to love people, but you got to let us shine a flashlight on the things that are in there hiding, and that has to come to trusting. You know, I remember my football coach hated me. Talked so much trash. I was bruised every week, but it was amazing. I look back, why didn't I quit? It's because my mom was so encouraging. I had an uncle that just wanted to beat me all the time. He thought my mom was going to raise me to be a little wuss. He was always worried about me. You know, he was always telling me, you and your brother, you're going to turn out a certain way if I don't come in and put the beat down on you. So I mean, he'd be in, who's your favorite uncle? I'd be on the ground, you are, you are. I'd feel my clavicle separating. Say it louder. Who's the king? Jesus, wrong. I'm the king. And I'd feel it just about to separate, and then all of a sudden, I'll never forget don't. My mom knocked him over the head with a pan, knocked him cold out, said, don't ever touch my boy again. I got up. I was like, yeah, that's right. That's right. Who's the king now? Yeah. Yeah. And it was so funny. He's like, I'm just trying to raise your kids tough because they're such wusses. And I'm, I appreciate it now. Like, he put the beat down. He was never nice to me, but I know he loves me. We still laugh about it today because now, you know, he's almost 70, and I could beat him. <laughs> you know, it feels good. So when I'm down on him saying, who's the king, it feels like, yes, I'm whooping this old guy. I got no shame in that game. He's still pretty tough, you know. <laughs> but I'm, I remember I had church hurt. My youth pastor's wife hated me. Didn't want me coming. You're like such an oxymoron. I'm in youth. You should love the youth. But I was a punk. She couldn't get past my punkness. 
I couldn't get past it. That's all I knew. It's just like, I'm going to irritate the youth pastor's wife tonight. You know what I mean? And, and it was, I did dumb things. But I appreciate it because Pastor Jurgen saw past that. I was acting out because I had a wounded spirit. And so he just kept loving it, even when I would do things. Shock and awe is what I called it. I'm going to shock Pastor Jurgen tonight. Boom. He'd be like, ha ha, that's funny. You going to kick me out of church? Nope. You need to come to church twice. You should come back on Wednesday. Matter of fact, you should come to the prayer meeting. I'd show up. It was just me and him. So it was good. He had all the skills. But it was such an important thing. And I will tell you this. People often, when they're bruised, feel useless. They feel like God can't use them. They disengage in church life. They disengage. They expect God will break off this bruised reed, snuff him out. There's no use for him. But I'm going to tell you something. Jesus restores your passion. He will restore you no matter how bruised you are. I promise you, what I can tell you is this. Stay engaged. Process with people that are healthy and come to men's prayer, women's prayer. A bruised spirit, stay engaged with people that can look after you and you will be healed. A lacerated spirit. When a person is cut in their spirit, they start to bleed. They, they get a little bit angry. They talk smack. They, they just, they, they have emotions. When they're cut, when these people use sharp words that intend to wound us, you can get cut. And, and what happens is, you know, in Psalm 64, 3, it says this, who sharpen their tongue like a sword and bend their, their bows to shoot their arrows, use bitter words. Proverbs 12, 18, there is one who speaks like the piercings of a sword, but the tongue of the wise promotes health. You could speak life or death. There's a generation whose teeth are like swords, whose fangs are like knives to devour the poor off the earth and the needy from among men. See, when we get when we get cut, we have to know when we get cut. There's a knowingness so we can clean the wound to stop the infection. Then protect it with bandages, helping it heal. I don't care if it's a deep cut or a superficial cut. We got to make sure we either stitch it up, close it up, or bandage it up so it does not get infected. You can't just keep getting stabbed in the back or stabbed by this or slammed by this and think you're going to go through life bleeding on other people. People that don't allow themselves to heal are always just throwing up about everything going wrong in their life, going on with this. It turns into a victim mentality. Spiritual maturity is just helping you if you're a good friend. I always say to someone, well, if they said that to you, why didn't you call them out on it? Oh, I didn't, I didn't want to hurt their feelings. Well, then you're a crappy friend. Oh, you don't want to hurt their feelings, so you let them just throw up on you? You let them pick their cut, pick their cut, pick their cut, so it never heals, so it can get infected. And if they die, it's really just your fault because you didn't help them wound. Because you wanted to be sensitive and not hurt their feelings. Be a real friend and speak some truth. Spiritual maturity calls it out. And the only way to heal a laceration or a cut spiritually is our spirit with forgiveness. Listen, it's difficult letting go of unkind words, unfair treatment, or actions that wounded us. The offenses resurface in our memory, bringing back the same pain over and over again. Most people are rehearsing and cursing their life over something that happened, and we never know. You, people don't know, maybe, maybe they're going around with razor blades, just swiping left and right. They don't know that they're hurting you, so someone has to tell them. Hey, you know, when you come over and hug me, you have a shanker with you. Can you not shank me in the back when you're hugging me? I want to trust you, but every time I get close to you, you pierce me. Why don't you let them know? Some people don't know. I just was hanging out with someone, and I appreciate the maturity. So as I sat down, he's like, hey, bro, I got to tell you. I'm like, oh, no. What did I do this time? He's like, well, I just didn't think you liked me. Okay. Well, I'm sitting next to you now. But I appreciate the spiritual maturity because he was able to tell me he didn't even realize, but then he felt like his son goes, oh, you're going to go hang out with that guy? And then he had the thing, oh, I got to bring it up. See, we were working it out, that spiritual maturity that he was big enough to sit down and tell me, you know, that he's like, yeah, I just didn't, I'm like, what did I do? And he goes, well, you gave me a hamburger at the river with no burger in it. <laughs> you think it's funny, man. He's a lot bigger than me, you know, but here's the truth. This whole time I'm thinking he was messing with me because I remember making epic burgers. And I remember going, bro, you want a burger? And so I gave him a burger. And then he goes, yeah, later on, he goes, there's no meat in this burger. I'm like, yeah, yeah, you're funny. So for however long it's been since last summer, I'm thinking, 
this guy's still messing with me. But no, in his mind, he's like, this cat doesn't like me. He hosed me with the burger. He passed out burgers to everybody but me. He just gave me a, a bun, which is such a crappy thing. But this whole time, I'm thinking he's messing with me, but I'm not hurt about it. I'm just thinking, oh, he's a, he's a funny guy. But he is taking that, that cut, like all this dude I should respect. No, he just cut me. And then I did a couple other stupid things, you know, said, hey, do you want a beer? And I kind of said, no, I, I didn't say it nicely, I guess. Just blew it off. Second thing, but the enemy will use that as fuel to create division. And where there's division, God can, or God can try to heal it. Or where there's division, the enemy can get in there and try to make it worse. Little things, I don't know, three months, six months, but here we have the opportunity to talk it out. He had a chance to forgive me. I could ask for forgiveness. I'm like, that's the dumbest thing ever. I owe this guy burgers for life now. Yeah. It's like, I, can't, I couldn't believe, you know what I mean? But this is the important stuff that matters. If he never said anything, I would never know. You don't know what you don't know. Here I'm going in going, oh, this guy's a little cold to me. Maybe he doesn't like me. I wonder what his problem is. And see, I'm having my internal dialogue, but he's all the time. I'm getting ready. I'm not going to go hang out with that guy that shafts me on burgers. I wouldn't hang out with me either. That's like the word. I'm like, yeah, come over. And then I keep my gate locked. I mean, that's, why would I invite someone over and keep my gate locked? These are little lacerations. Some of you just haven't been stabbed, but you got thousands of little cuts. We're just bleeding because we're not choosing to forgive. We're not going up and letting that person know. We got to be able to engage and let people know. We have to process with other people so the enemy can't use those wounds and get us infected. I'm going to tell you, I've been stabbed. I've been hurt. I've had best friends take 180000 from me. And I remember I was having this choice. It was the most money I've ever lost. And God says, you need to forgive him. Showed me a picture of what would happen to his family if I went after him, sued him, all this stuff. So I let it go. And God's like, you know I can restore that money, no problem. You know, I could do this. I could Romans 8, 28 it all day long. All things work together for good for those that love the Lord according to his riches, his power, his authority. But could I trust him in that? I had to trust God or go what the world was telling me. All my people in the world, like, you got to take him out. You got to sue him. You got to go get your money back. I'm going to tell you, forgiveness is the essential learned art. Every one of us will suffer offenses at some stage. Forgiving is standing in the presence of God saying, I forgive them and I bless them in Jesus' name. Can you do that? You don't want to walk by someone and put your head down or go, oh, they're going on this trip. I ain't going. They're stealing your joy. They're taking up real estate in your mind, in your soul. It's starting to get infected. When you are choosing not to go somewhere because of someone, make it another reason. I don't go to places if I feel like they're going to suck the life out of me. But if I have angst on somebody, I go deal with it. The best pillow you can buy is a clear conscience. Sleep well at night. Forgiveness precedes repentance. Don't wait for the offender to apologize. Most of them don't even know. We got to forgive them before they ever come. Many people are at the mercy of their own thoughts and emotions and have little control over what they think and feel. However, we can stop being hijacked by our own negative thoughts. God gave you a spirit of self-control. We can control our thoughts and emotions if we allow them. Jesus said in John 14, 1, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe in me also. This means we gotta stop our hearts from being troubled. We gotta stop anxiety from ruling us, depression from ruling us, mother-in-law, father-in-law, who has ever got this thing that it's irritating to be around. Set up boundaries, sure. But we got to be early to forgive. Learn to speak God's word. Make your mind stay on what creates faith and stop dwelling on depressing thoughts. uh, Philippines. (laughs) I was in the Philippines once and they taught me this. (laughs) Philippians 4.8. Finally, brethren, Whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are good, report. If there is any virtue and if there's anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Closing the wounds of the past, healing starts to flow easy. Breakthrough comes. 
Healing the cuts in our spirit means not fellowshipping with negative, bitter people. I think it's strange that wounded people sometimes seek out others just like them to endure and endorse their same attitude. They put an amen to their pain, an amen to their cut. They justify being where they're at. Rather than getting healed, they get worse. Resist the temptation to nurse your hurts. Take medicine that brings healing. That's why they say that statement, friends of a feather flock together. Broken spirit, this is the nastiest one. We gotta be careful of a broken spirit. This type actually... This is, the, this is the one that damages the soul. A broken spirit can damage your soul. When someone's spirit is broken, their motivation has been broken. They feel no urge to even get up in the morning. They feel fatigued, depressed. They can get physically sick easy. They start seeing faults in others. They start to look through a lens of a critical spirit. They don't try to attempt things anymore. Life appears hopeless to these people. Psalm 34, 18, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. Psalms 147, 3, he heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. Isaiah 61, 1, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim the good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release darkness from the prisoners. Let me tell you, If you've ever been on that side of it, you'd be standing up cheering, I'm gonna tell you. Proverbs 15, 13 says this, a merry heart makes a cheerful countenance, but the sorrow of the heart, the spirit is broken. The spirit of a man will sustain him in sickness, but who can bear a broken spirit? Proverbs 25, 28 says, whoever has no rule over his spirit is like a city broken down without walls. How do we know if we have a broken spirit? We've lost motivation. We've lost our creative urge. Sunny days look gray. Depression and discouragement come easy. We find encouragement painful. You don't want to be celebrated. Raising faith on the inside that God, do, God will do something good for you almost seems impossible. You become suspicion of everyone, even close friends. You're exhausted for no good reason. You start to react badly to pressure for decisions you're trying to make. You're not happy about helping others. You start not wanting to go to church. Parallels between physical sickness and spiritual sickness start to get too close. The healing process for our bodies are similar to what brings healing to our spirit. When a bone breaks, it will heal, but it needs nutrients needs to be in alignment, needs to be guarded. When you lose control of your temper, you become vulnerable till the devil, he uses that door. When your emotions take over, the devil can come in, wreak havoc on you. When you get impatient and angry, shorten your spirit like King Saul. You're trying to guard a broken spirit. They say the number one thing that creates a broken spirit is when trust is breached. We are broken in spirit when trust is breached. When someone tells secrets of our life, but in the confidence it's not kept, trust is breached. We expect support from other peoples in the battle, in the middle of the battle, and they fail us, maybe even turn against us, trust gets broken. But what are we gonna do about it? There's a lot of broken trust in our society today. It was 40% then 50%. Now they say marriage is like 63% chance success rate, whatever it is. Divorce is rampant. It's one of the biggest breaches of trust. People think when it, the Bible says God hates divorce, it's like, oh, he's so judgmental. No, because he knows the destruction it will do. But what happens is if we can make sure that when trust is breached, we give it to God and we do it the quicker, the, the faster our spirit doesn't get broken. It could be bruised, it could be cut, but we allow it to be broken if we keep trying to touch things when they're broken, it's always whatever you're touching. If you have a broken finger, like, ouch, ouch, ouch. 
Trust is strength, not weakness. Our spirit is the fountain of strength. When trust breaks, our spiritual reservoir depletes. It dries up. It's breaking our spirit. When our spirit breaks, our trust does too. Betrayal is like relying on a branch of a tree for support, but it snaps. We fall and we break bones. We don't walk properly. We can't carry anything heavy. Other people's burdens are too much. People with a broken spirit can be preoccupied with themselves. They withdraw. They say the second most important thing about trust is if you have a failure. Think about your kids. Maybe it's a grade. Maybe they strike out in baseball. Maybe they dropped a pass playing that that little football league. We don't know how fragile it is, but can we encourage them anyway so we can define, so they don't walk around at their young age with a broken spirit. They come to church to get life and life to the full. You can give people too much too soon. They weren't ready to be promoted beyond their competency or their capacity. So the load of what you put on them breaks their spirit. We have to know that. We have to be good stewards of people. I'll stand before the Lord one day. I'll be accountable for he who entrusted me to shepherd. I have to have my pulse on it. That's why my hair is falling out. It's a little stressful. If you guys could all just chill out a little bit. If we could just all level up our life today, I know we're good. But we got to allow ourselves to be real, to not put up the walls, to pretend everything's good, to be all Christianese. God is going to set the own pace for you to take it at your own pace, but you got to be bold enough to trust. Like, you know what? I'm done having a bruised spirit. I'm done having a lacerated spirit. I'm done having a broken spirit. I want to be healed because God can heal you and restore you. They say the only way to heal a broken spirit, spirit is all loads have to be taken off. You have to know and tell someone You can put on that front, but if people keep thinking, oh, look, he's still smiling, we give you more to do, it's your responsibility to speak the truth about where you're at in your spirit. If not, oh, yeah, we give you more to do. And they're like, oh, that church, oh, yeah, they gave, I was doing this, I was doing that, oh, this business, they asked me to do this, they asked me to do this. You broke yourself because of your lack or the insecurity that drove you to the point of breaking. Can we be real? We got to let the bones set properly and heal properly, and it takes time. Get the load off. The last one is the poison spirit. It's the most deadly. Hurt people that spew, judge, control, condemn. They're slow to discipleship. They cause dissension. Psalm 140, verse 3, they sharpen their tongues like a serpent. The poison of the ass is under their lips. Selah. One of the saddest things is knowing good people who have turned bad. Unfortunately, the devil sours people's attitudes, turning them from the sweetest of saints into bitter, angry people. All because they didn't take care of a bruise along the way, a cut along the way, a broken spirit along the way. We all fall short. But I will say this, don't entertain anyone poisoning you against another. Proverbs 25, 23, the north wind brings forth rain and the backbiting tongue of an angry continent. I will say this, this poison about other comes straight at us through various communication. Don't even read letters. If someone wrote you a letter, it will poison your spirit. Don't read it, burn it. If someone sends you a text message that is hateful, delete it. Don't read it. It will get, it's, it's a enemy way to get into your spirit to that arrow to hit you. Water off a duck's back. Don't rehearse it. Don't read it. You don't need that in your spirit, in your mind. It will poison your spirit. You put the word of God in your spirit. You put the word of God in your mind. You renew your mind. If you need help praying, things that are spoken over you from a childhood things that were cursed of it, you'll never amount to anything. Don't come into agreement with it. So many people, they're just sitting under that darkness that someone else spoke over them. But you can break it today. You can break it today. I'm gonna tell you how to get rid of the poison. Feed on the word of God. 
get washed by the Holy Spirit in worship. That's why that song, there was some potency on it. Fellowship with healthy, strong, positive believers that can help cleanse you. 1 John 1, 7, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Here's the thing. And I, I end on this and then I wanna pray for us. Peter denied Jesus three times. He had a broken spirit. He denied Jesus and he hosed all his friends. So he went back fishing. The first thing Jesus did when he was resurrected, you know what he went to go do? He went to go find Peter. That's how much Jesus loves you. He's gonna go leave the 99 to find the one. He'll meet you where you're at. And you know what he did? He asked Peter, do you love me? You know how many times he asked Peter that? Three times. He wanted Peter to know, I know you denied me three times, but I know you love me. It's gonna cancel out. He came to restore Peter, and Peter went and turned the world upside down. Don't be a victim to the enemy's tactics. Two Old Testament figures, and the Old Testament's a blueprint, and we can live our life through it. Joseph went through H-E-double-L. His brothers threw him under the bus, abandoned him. He got accused of things he never did. He got left alone in a jail cell. He had so many chances to let bruises, bruises, cuts, cuts turn into a broken spirit. He refused to have a broken spirit. He refused. He took everything to the Lord. And I want to tell you why this is important. Because some of you I know just aren't going to get over the line to do it for you. I need you to do it for your family, your legacy, your name. Here's why. Joseph did things the right way. He kept bringing it to God. He kept his heart pure. God used him when he saw his family again. You know, he wept because he had so many hurts, but he wept to the Lord and God met him where he's at and healed him. But guess what? You go look at the lineage of Joseph, his kids, Jesus came down the lineage, but his kids went on to be the tribes of Israel. The other person in the Old Testament that couldn't get over his insecurities was Gideon. Gideon did amazing things for God. But there was consequence because he wasn't obedient. He didn't get through his insecurities. He got angry. He got ticked off at people. He went and took some people out he shouldn't have. He went and did things out of his hurt, out of his brokenness, out of his wounded spirit. He reacted a certain way. You go read about his kids. God showed me. You're the first one in your family to make a stand and ask me this question. So your kids will have a different trajectory than you. You don't, you don't have to worry about your kids doing all the things you did. I'm going to tell you, I want us all to stand to our feet. I want to pray for you. God never forces himself on you. Some of you need to get back into relationship with Jesus. Some of you know there may be a bruised spirit, a wounded spirit, a broken spirit. I don't want any of you to have a poison spirit. People with a poison spirit, it's hard to get them into church. They're like, they spew when you say church. <laughs> I love when I meet people. I didn't know we have a new name at church. I said, oh, they go, oh, where you? I, we're like the, the old church. They go, where do you go to church? I go, awake, and they go, oh. <laughs> you should come to church. Yeah. No, I ain't going there. If you want breakthrough, you will. Yeah. I know what my life was before. I knew Jesus before. But who pastors you, who disciples you, I know it matters. This altar right here, it matters. You got to be the one to take a step. I'm not going to run up there and pull you down. I'm not going to push you. I'm not going to pull you. I'm not going to force you. Jesus doesn't do that either. God gave us a free will. If you want breakthrough, if you want healing, then you got to come get it. As I'm praying, whatever you're at today, and we're gonna go into worship. I want you to come to the altar. If you know you gotta deal with where your spirit's at, whether it's a laceration, a bruise, or a broken heart, even if it's poison, we're gonna meet you where you're at. The altar is where your life gets altered. Did it for me, we're here to equip you, give you the tools. This is time to remodel your life. You were all made in the image of God, Imago Dei. You were born and called to be champions. The question is, will you allow God to get to the places to help you get over the line for it. We all fall short. 
that God's going to meet you where you're at. So as I pray, I want you to come down to the altar. We're going to pray with you. We're going to go into this worship song and service is over. If you can't do it for yourself, do it for your family, your generations. Please sign that Kids Act out in the lobby, the one that's going to protect the next generation from doing dumb things. Because you know what? The spirit of the world is trying to infect our kids. And let me tell you something. There's a lot of poison out there that are infecting our kids, and we need to protect them. So that's why we have that. And then high schools at Bresci. Make sure we get our high school students over the line to Bresci. It's going to be an epic deal. Let's help them get around good people so we can look after them and speak good things and speak life over. But turn your heads, palms to heaven. And I'm going to open up the altar right now so you can start to come down, and we can help you walk through some of those Just a moment on the altar can help heal up some bruises that you maybe didn't even know you had. Heavenly Father, God, I thank you for this moment. God, I thank you for this word, God, exposing the lies of the enemy, trying to get us to walk around bruised, hurt, maybe even religious, like, no, I'm all good. But God, I thank you, Lord, as we let down the walls, you start to heal what needs to be healed. Restore what needs to be restored. Remodel what needs to be remodeled. God, I thank you, Lord, that you've given us the blueprint to live a life of a champion on this side of eternity. So, God, Lord, as we open up our heart today, heal what needs to be healed. God, I thank you, Lord, we give you our mind, Lord. We renew it today. We break every stronghold of our mind that is stuck in lack mentality and victim mentality, and this is as good as it gets. God, we believe for greater today. God, we are worthy to be celebrated. God, I thank you, Lord that you're bringing bold people to this house to do bold things for your kingdom, God. But Lord, we wanna peel back this next layer so the ceiling that we stare at will be our next floor in Jesus' name. God, I thank you, Lord, that we can be vulnerable with one another, that we can let down the areas that we built up a facade and pretend that everything's okay, that we know that our marriage is called the greatness, God, that addictions can be broken, that we can stop the self-wound and the self-care and let other people care for our wounds, God. We thank you for resurrection power over our life, over our mind, over our spirit and our soul. I thank you, Lord, that healing of the wounded spirit starts now. In Jesus' name we pray. Wow, what an amazing word. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. Hey, listen, for more information about our church, go to www.awakenchurch.com or subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already and download our app. It is amazing. It is chock full of incredible messages, information about upcoming events, and you can even support our ministry if you feel so inclined. We loved having you with us today. We look forward to seeing you again. God bless you. Live a life that is transformative. Bye for now.